Great. A couple more people joining us. Welcome. Welcome to anyone who's just joining us. We're about to get started. Okay. Well, I guess the time is now. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the ITS Canada 2021 virtual, virtual award celebration. My name is Rachel Franco, and I'm your conference host. Today's session is sponsored by IBI Group. The ITS Canada Awards are a celebration of excellence and recognition for outstanding contributions within the Canadian intelligent transportation systems industry. 2021 marks the 12th year of the awards program, acknowledging and valuing the importance of professional ITS expertise and to raise awareness of the safety benefits and values ITS technologies brings to cities, economies, the environment, transportation, and everyday lives. Today, we will be presenting a total of nine awards in four different categories, Member of the Year Awards, Intelligent Mobility Awards, Excellence in R&D Awards, and Young Professional Awards. This session is being recorded. For the next 15 minutes or so, we will learn more about each award recipient and the impact of their contributions to ITS in Canada. Please submit all of your questions in the Q&A chat box. Without further ado, it is my pleasure to introduce you to Usha Eliatambi, Chair of the ITS Canada 2021 Awards Program. Usha is Director with the Intelligence Sector and National Toll Market Leader for Tolling in North America at IBI Group. IBI Group is a 47-year-old firm that, provi that prides itself in defining the cities of tomorrow and being a technology-driven design firm. Usha has over 20 years of experience with technology-led initiatives within the transportation mobility arena. She has been a trusted advisor and has been instrumental in establishing new revenue payment systems, advanced traffic management systems, and control center operations across the globe. She is pretty amazing. She leads clients with strategic planning, financial an analysis, critical thinking around design and development for construction and operations. Through all the various project life cycles, the emphasis is given to innovation, value, constructability, and maintainability. As a leading professional in the infrastructure solutions practice, Usha advises public agencies and private infrastructure concessions and operators on technology roadmaps for their capital and operational expenditures for a successful, successful operation. With the ever-changing arena of intelligent transportation systems and digital economy, it has been important to provide sustainable solutions to clients. Usha has been involved in ITS Canada for over 15 years and the chair of the ITS Canada Awards program over the last three years. She has revamped the ITSC awards to drive recognition of innovation, emerging technologies and growing talent in the industry. Usha is very excited to participate in this year's ITS Canada virtual conference as am I, as I'm sure all of you are. And now you can take it away Usha. Usha, are you muted? I think you're still muted. Yes, I am. Thank you Rachel, for highlighting that. Thank you, Rachel. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the ITS Canada Awards Program. This awards program again is virtual this year, a second year in a row, but hopefully next year we will be back in person and exciting to actually hand things over in person to all the award winners. Um, this awards program is important to both the membership and those being initiated into the ITS arena since it's, a, it's one way to recognize the interesting and valuable work undertaken by our fellow ITS professionals. We're very delighted to highlight our industry leaders, emerging professionals, and showcase milestone making projects that are both transformational in nature as well as supporting growing ITS evolution. This year, we had over 20 submissions, which was a record number in recent years. And thank you goes to all of the evaluators, including Carol Ogilvie from, um, from Ogilvie LLC, Claude Sirua from MTQ, and Corey Edgar from PVX Engineering. But that, without their support and getting the evaluations done on time, we won't be here. So I have to 
give my um, um, biggest thank yous to all three of them. Without further ado, I want to start out the program and our video presentations with our first video presentation. Raf, over to you. The ITS Canada 2021 Distinguished Member of the Year Award goes to Jeff Knapp, WSP. within the ITS arena who has been engaged with the ITS industry for a very long standing period, as well as continuously making changes and pushing the envelope in terms of what ITS has to be in the ever changing digital age. And to this, this individual has supported the industry grow, but also his leadership and insights have really been helpful in transforming both how um, Canada looks at ITS, but also the regionally as well as locally how things have changed. And this Distinguished Service Award goes to Jeff Knapp. And here's Jeff Knapp to accept the award. Thank you, Usha. Um, let's just say I'm uh, really humbled uh, to receive this award, particularly when I think of all the past recipients, uh, those that I've uh, really uh, respected and understood and appreciated their contributions to ITS Canada and uh, to the industry as a whole. Uh, also want to thank uh, those that nominated me uh, and others uh, on the awards committee that uh, chose me. And then also to my colleagues and friends that I work with on a day-to-day -day basis. Thanks. And it's not coming up because it's blurred. That's my award. Thanks. Thank you, Jeff. And a round of applause to Jeff. Thank you. So going over to our next uh, award, we are looking at the Member of the Year Award under the ITS Champion. <clears throat> and this um, award actually goes to one of my colleagues, Jonathan Darton, who is a trusted colleague and has been recognized as the ITS Canada 2021 ITS Champion. He's been a champion of using both technology and try to transform both the transportation arena over the last 15 years, but he continues to grow the ITS community within regional initiatives, which he's both looked at from the ATMS as well as the mobility and mobile application side of things. So here's the video um, to showcase Jonathan. The ITS Canada 2021 ITS Champion Award goes to Jonathan Darton from IBI Group. to welcome my colleague Jonathan Darton and here, here's Jonathan to accept his award. Thanks Usha. Thanks to ITS Canada for the recognition. Uh, thanks to the awards committee. I've been very fortunate to work with some amazing colleagues and teams within IBI and clients and partner agencies um, throughout um, this great country and really appreciate the recognition. It means a lot. So thank you very much. And also thanks for this really cool piece of art. Hope you can see it there. Thanks again. Thank you, Jonathan. So next on our award list are the technical awards that we had recategorized for this year. 
And the first award is under the Intelligent Mobility Awards category, specifically the Connected and Automated Vehicles Award, which goes to the Project GTA CAV Readiness Plan. This award is being accepted by Susan Booth of MTO, but here's a video um, background on the project itself. The ITS Canada 2021 Mobility Award for Connected and Automated Vehicles goes to MTO and WSP for the GTHA CAV Readiness Plan. words and accept the award, both Susan and Mara Bullock um, from WSB are going to come on to accept that and to speak about the pro project itself. Hi, can you see me? Okay, good. Uh, Susan Booth here from the Ministry of Transportation. I just wanted to say a few words. Uh, thank you very much to ITS Canada and the awards committee for recognizing our project. Um, a big thank you to all of our partners. Uh, we worked with Transport Canada, the City of Toronto, uh, Region of Peel, Metrolinx and WSP uh, to do this work. Um, and we really wanna also thank everybody who attended our workshops and, and, and contributed their expertise uh, to, uh, to creating these guidelines. Um, I'm really happy to be here on behalf of MTO and uh, happy to continue this work on smart mobility across Ontario. I think it's got lots of opportunity. Uh, and I do want to put a little bit of a plug in um, as a result of this uh, uh, readiness work. We've uh, created a forum. Uh, so any uh, municipal uh, trans road, tra road and transit authorities out there who want to join our forum through AVEN, um, I highly encourage that. I, I, have, I got the official award, so I will show that. And then um, I'll turn it over to Mara to say a few words. But thank you very much. It was uh, it's an honor. Thank you. Thanks, Susan, for those awards. And I just wanted to say a couple things. Uh, first of all, just to say this was a really unique project. Um, we had a steering committee comprised of the agencies that Susan mentioned, and it was really great for public and private sector just to roll up their sleeves and really sit down and work. Um, I did a quick back of the envelope, envelope calculation, but there's over a year of public sector engagement um, and effort put into this project. Um, I'm also uh, really excited to share that there's going to be training on um, this plan. Uh, stay tuned uh, for training in September. There's going to be three three-hour sessions, and going through that, uh, an agency will actually have a readiness plan of their own. So uh, stay tuned for more information from ITS Canada. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Susan, and thank you, Mara. It's actually exciting to see uh, uh, a lot of emerging things happening. So um, I welcome everyone to take on those workshops, uh, whoever is attending, but also word of mouth to others who are not here today. Next on the award, under the Intelligent Mobility Awards list, is for the <clears throat> green, sorry, bear with me. Um, it's for the data-driven transport outcomes. And this award goes to City of Surrey for their electrical maintenance digital logbook. And Brand Cross from the City of Surrey um, will be accepting the award, but here's the video. The ITS Canada 2021 Mobility Award for Data-Driven Transport Outcomes goes to the City of Surrey for their Electrical Maintenance Digital Logbook. from the city of Asari is here to accept the award 
Um, here's the Grand Cross. Uh, hello, thank you, uh, Usha and uh, ITS Canada. And uh, hello from uh, Surrey, British Columbia on the other side of the coast. And uh, I just wanna say on behalf of the city, we're just uh, extremely thrilled to be uh, recognized for this, uh, for this work. And uh, it's just very, very exciting. And uh, we're just happy to, um, uh, to be recognized today and, uh, and, and that uh, the work that's uh, been done by the team here has, uh, has been uh, um, uh, really, um, uh, it demonstrates excellence that went behind it. Uh, just want to introduce uh, quickly, um, I'm uh, Graham Cross, the, and I oversee the Intelligent Transportation Systems of the city. I have uh, Rajesh Reddy here in, in the middle, uh, who administers the electrical maintenance contract. Uh, we have Maddie Naivi, who's our GIS analyst, uh, who uh, did all of the back end work. And, uh, and then just behind us on the screen is the uh, outcome of our, uh, of our efforts uh, and this uh, real time uh, dashboard for uh, being able to view and visualize uh, electrical maintenance activity is uh, really going to be helpful to the city. Um, and uh, I just want to also thank ITS Canada for this uh, um, award here, and it's going to be uh, placed in a position of prominence. So thank you so much. Thank you. Well deserved, especially as uh, assets are becoming invaluable. We need to know what's going on with each of our assets. So great work. Thank and you. Thank you. So next on our awards list is our Green Transportation Award under the Intelligence Mobility as well. And this, the Green Transportation Award goes to the Advanced Bus Detection and Signal System, which also is a West Coast project, the city of Burnaby. Um, so let's start the video. The ITS Canada 2021 Mobility Award for Green Transportation goes to the City of Burnaby for their Advanced Bus Detection and Signal System. So on behalf of the city of Burnaby, we have Madhud Hassan, who is going to be accepting the award. And here's Madhud. Good morning. Thank you very much, uh, everyone, ITS Canada, for your kind consideration. Uh, we are at city of Burnaby, very uh, honored, excited to receive this award. And I actually have to thank uh, our partners, uh, who are probably not in the room. TransLink, uh, Botech, and Crown, we all work together. So uh, all this uh, hard work and really, really appreciate your recognition. And uh, these efforts initiatives by ITS Canada overall is very timely one uh, as, as most uh, bigger cities and everywhere else we are seeing the importance of moving transit forward and finding ways to achieve efficiency. And this is part of our climate action plan as well. So we look forward to working uh, with all of you uh, together and uh, to find better, brighter ways. Uh, thank you very much. And thank you very much for the beautiful, uh, uh, sorry, it's not appearing, but uh, it's a wonderful uh, uh, artwork. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, thank you. Thank you again. And uh, the next award still under intelligent mobility of, um, <clears throat> category is for the emergency vehicle project by Cash in Alberta. To the video, please. The ITS Canada 2021 Mobility Award for Smart Mobility Connected Infrastructure goes to Cash Traffic.com for their Emergency Vehicle Corridor Project in Calgary.
So for this award, <clears throat> Raman Jafrudi of CAPS is here to accept the award. Hello, um, this is Raman Jafrudi, National Sales Director at CAPS Traffic um, Canada. I would like to thank ITS Canada for organizing the 2021 virtual conference and also for this uh, amazing award. Uh, I would also like to thank uh, the City of Calgary, the traffic department led by Ravi Sira, and also Jody, the leading engineer from the city responsible for this project, and all of our colleagues who contributed to this successful project. It was a great collaboration between CAPS and the City of Calgary in deployment of a state-of-the-art connected vehicle technology to increase the safety at the city's intersections for the road users, emergency vehicles, and the pedestrians passing those intersections. This is a future-oriented solution that can be easily extended to other applications, for example, preemption for transit vehicles, snow plows, utilizing other systems like, you know, uh, video analytic solutions, interfacing with the connected vehicle technology to notify the road users about the hazards and a lot more. Again, thanks to the teams from the city of Calgary and CAPS who contributed to this successful project. Thank you. Thank you, Raman. I think one of the things that has knitted across all the projects is the fact that we have um, infrastructure that could be legacy, could be new, but it's trying to bring it towards what is future, which is connected vehicles to data and how do you mine data for the benefit of operations and also to be very much responsive in the real time world that we all live in. So how, how does that data help us further our operations and enhance our operations. And I think that's really the underlying theme on all the winners under the um, intelligent mobility uh, category. So I wanna thank everyone who uh, participated in the awards itself for the intelligent mobility, but also are the winners and the recipients, as you can see, they all brought forward great projects that are looking at ideas with, with the new lens in place. So thank you everyone for your submissions and to those who won uh, the Mobility Awards. Next, we have our pr presentation on the R Re Research and Development Award. And for this year's R&D Award, we have digital transformation of infrastructure projects using LiDAR technology and artificial intelligence. And here's the video to give you a bit of background. The ITS Canada 2021 Excellence in Research and Development Award goes to Nectar 3D Consulting for their digital transformation of transportation infrastructure projects using LiDAR technology and artificial intelligence. Consulting, we have Suleiman Gargum, who is here to accept the award. Hopefully, I pronounced your name correctly. Yeah, you did. Um, thanks, Rochelle. Sure. Thanks, uh, Rochelle. Um, thanks to, to the selection committee for uh, for selecting us for this award. Uh, it's um, really a pleasure on uh, to be receiving this award on behalf of, of the Nectar Group. Um, I'd like to thank my colleagues, obviously, who. Uh, work with, with me on this project, uh, Lloyd Carston, Amy Hu, um, Taylor Matt, um, and, and others. Um, I'd, also, I'd also like to thank the, the National Research Council um, of Canada for, the, for, for actually funding this, this research. Calvin Lee, in, in particular, has been um, coordinating that effort. Um, finally, I'd like to mention that um, this project is actually part of, of um, wider efforts by the Nectar Group in the area of um, using AI and cloud-based management solutions to facilitate full digitization of, of activities on transportation, civil infrastructure projects. Um, so that includes design, construction, asset management, just transforming all those activities on those different projects into um, virtual cloud-based based activities using the, the technology, part of which was, was developed as part of, of this project. 
Um, and I'll actually be speaking tomorrow um, about our work on the, the West LRT um, expansion project here in Edmonton, um, where we, um, we demonstrated the value of, of using the research um, on an actual um, existing um, project. So um, be happy to, to see you in, in that presentation. And if anyone has any questions, I'll be happy to, to take them. Thanks, Usha. Thank you. So our next presentation is for the Young Professional Award, which is which has been <clears throat> something that we um, tried to recognize because of our up and coming young talent. And here's the video before we, um, we present the award. The ITS Canada 2021 Young Professional Award goes to Sin Chen from IBI Group. Young Professional Award goes to individuals under 40 who have been practicing in the arena of ITS for a number of years. This award recognizes the individual's contribution uh, to the application of ITS and also demonstrating their growth and success in this arena. So this year, this award is being presented to an up and coming engineer, Zin Chen, and here's Zin to accept the award. Thanks, Susha, and uh, I'm honored to receive this award. I would like to thank Nikos for the uh, nomination to the team at IBI Group for their continuous support and uh, to ITS Canada for having this award uh, to support young professionals in this field. And I would uh, encourage all of the managers to nominate young professionals from their teams uh, for next year's award. So uh, thanks again, it's a, a word. Thank you. And I think um, I have, I noticed a theme with all of my IBI group colleagues that they love to climb mountains. So I think the theme is anyone who's nominated from IBI has to have a love for uh, mountain, climbing mountains, I see. Um, so next on the video uh, presentations, uh, the, next on the award list is uh, a lifetime member award for from ITS Canada. And this specific award is very special to me and others at ITS Canada. We've all been very privileged to work with someone who's on, uh, or who's been on our team, be it uh, as a member, be it as, as a volunteer who's needing help, be it newcomers. Um, we've ha always had the privilege to work with Jeff and to get to know him over the number of years. And Jeff is, uh, a face that you'll never forget at, at uh, ITS Canada. Today, he's being honored with the ITS Canada Lifetime Member Award. He is known for his quick wit, his dapper tux, and his dressing style, and his consummate dedication to the association and its members. He is, he's always known as Mr. Sociable, and there's a, uh, there's a reason for why he's been named Mr. Sociable. As you all know, new and old, you are always greeted by Jeff with a very big smile and he is always there to listen to all the problems that you're having and finding solutions for it. So without further ado, I want to thank Jeff for his years of service and being that friendly face at IPS Canada. So here's my esteemed um, colleague uh, from IPS Canada, Jeffrey Smart from Tassel to accept his award. The ITS Canada 2021 Lifetime Member Award goes to Jeffrey Smart.
So here's Jeff um, to accept his award. And further, without further ado, his wife will be accompanying him to present the award to Jeff. And hopefully, Jeff, you get you are on audio. You can hear us. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, great. Uh, this is an absolute complete surprise. I like to thank everyone involved at ITS Canada for this um, award. It is truly unexpected. Uh, and for those of you who know me. Um, I just, I have a lot of fun doing what it is I do. Uh, I certainly appreciate uh, everyone's efforts. We try to make things as best we can within in these times uh, and also meeting people, making them feel welcome, contribute to the society as a whole and to uh, make the conferences as well as the society uh, a valid one in the, not only the national but also into the international uh, scheme of um, these types of uh, societies. I'm truly uh, honored and um, humbled by this. And I'd just like to say thank you to everyone uh, for uh, receiving this award. Thank you. It's your award. Congratulations. And on behalf of uh, the team and for myself and my family, I thank you very much for this. And uh, thanks again. Appreciate it. And we have Ian who is going to share a few words as well, Ian Steele. Thanks very much, Usha. Jeff, congratulations. I can't think of a more deserving candidate. Uh, I have very much enjoyed my time on the board working with you. I know the board has always valued your opinion and input. And particularly, I think uh, in this last year and a half, uh, your input into planning for all that we do and ensuring that the needs of the vendor and the supplier community and your colleagues and members at large are well represented has been extremely invaluable to the organization. Usha already alluded to it there with the notes on social, but I'd like to recount my personal first experience with that. I recall a long, long time ago, my first gala event with ITS Canada. <clears throat> it was in a grand ballroom, a uh, bit of a stuffy affair, to be honest. And I thought, oh, geez, this is going to be a bit dry. And then before I knew it, here's this guy sharply dressed in a black tux, walking around with a giant glass of wine, getting the entire crowd yelling multiple rounds of sociable. I thought, OK, now it's a party. So I think your contributions to the culture of the industry at large need to be acknowledged as well. So on behalf of ITS Canada, Jeff, congratulations. Well-deserved. Well, and I, and I thank you very much. And I also would be remiss if I did not also say thank you also to Yannicka and to her team as well, too. Um, it's great working with everybody, um, my contributions as well, too, to the society. And I thank you very, very much for, for this. And I look forward to um, continuing on as well. So. Thanks again, everyone. It's indeed a humbling uh, experience and I appreciate everyone's uh, support. And for those who don't know Jeffrey, I just wanted to share a little bit of background on uh, Jeff. Jeff, stay on. Um, <laughs> maybe I'll be embarrassing you a bit, but that's okay. Um, Jeff has um, served as a vice president. He's currently serving as vice president for Tesla Limited but has been with them since 1984. During the time he's worked on a number of ITS implementations, um, both for tra traffic management systems and incident detection across Canada. He's been a director of ITS Canada for 15 years and has been the, has chaired the exhibit, exhibitor advisory committee of the ITS Canada annual conference and has been the chair of member services committee and sits on the board of directors of OTC. He is also a long-standing member of IMSA, the Ontario chapter. So a bit of background of, on Jeff uh, as well. I've known Jeff for a very long time and he's made me, welcomed me and made me part of the organization from the very get-go. Jeff, Jeffrey John Smart was born in Scarborough in 1959. He, his uh, high school education, well, uh, his post-secondary, I should say, was achieved at uh, Ryerson and he graduated in electrical technology. And during his years at Ryerson, that's where he met his good looking wife, Masha. And they have, um, um, they had their son, Nathaniel, and then they welcomed their daughter, Annelise. And they also have a daughter-in-law called Amanda. And Jeff loves spending time with his family and their dog, Luna. Jeff also enjoys the simple pleasures of life, a good joke, 
a sense of humor that honestly cannot be matched by a lot of people, Jeffrey, Jeff, and his honesty, his uh, liking for music, a simple food and single blended malt and lots of board games of any kind, especially if he's winning, are uh, things that you should know about Jeff. And I think overall, he's a voracious reader as well as he has the good mysteries never far away. He, if, if it is not a book grazing his hands, it'll definitely be one of his Martin or Gibson guitars, especially the one he can handcrafted, a self-made luthier, a true blue Leafs fan, and blue days are not far behind. Um, Jeff is a man, true to his word, a loyal friend to many. He has had many names. Ian and I mentioned Mr. Sociable, Jeffrey, Jeff, JJ, Ron, Dad, Pops, Father, Uncle Jeff, and soon he will be welcoming and adorning another name, Poppy, as he awaits the arrival of his first grandchild this summer. Congratulations, Jeff, and thank you for being part of the ITS uh, community for this long. Well, thank you very much for those kind words as well. I don't know what to say, but I certainly do appreciate it. And it's pretty bang on. I don't know who you're who your script writer was, but they certainly know me pretty good. That's all I can tell you. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so anyways, to everyone there, sociable, okay? Thank you, Jeff. And congratulations again. Um, next, as we move on, um, I think this is the moment I want to thank everyone uh, in terms of the participation and to join all of us uh, and the recipients in a, a short Q&A. Um, we have um, 12 minutes uh, in terms of doing the Q&A. And I think if everyone can bring themselves on video, that would be excellent. And then uh, everyone on, <clears throat> on in the audience, if you can submit questions and we can sort of get started. This is more of a collaborative session um, to learn more about the candidates, but also to learn about some of the projects that they've uh, they've been presented. I think I'll start with the question whilst we wait for others to uh, submit questions. Um, <clears throat> I would ask the city of Surrey um, how what what their approach was in terms of going towards the digitization of the electrical maintenance logbook and what sort of really um, was impetus to going down that route um, was, was their sort of background in terms of um, heading in that direction and what have been the benefits um, since they've implemented it. Uh, hello, thank you, Asha. Um, and I, I think I'm on um, unmuted here. So uh, I think uh, Surrey, uh, like many other uh, um, road authorities, um, with our traffic signal electrical maintenance, uh, had uh, documented that on pen and paper, and, uh, and, and each of those were stored in, in, in 430 cabinets across the city here. And whenever you want to understand the history of the maintenance at a particular location or to verify something, um, you can appreciate uh, leaving from your office, driving somewhere 25, 30 minutes across the city, get this uh, uh, paper out, take some photographs, come back to the office, look at your photographs and the, and the, uh, the chicken scratch uh, on there. It was not really uh, providing the, uh, the best um, approach to, to documenting that information and even to do any kind of analysis on that for efficiencies. And so uh, the process generally, generally or, or overall, uh, I would describe it as a system of engagement uh, where we um, digitized our inventory. Uh, we provided or created an app for our um, contract, uh, contracted electricians plus city staff to uh, enter an activity into this uh, app, which centralizes the data. And uh, now that's in a standardized form um, and it's in, a, uh, in our centralized system here at the city, uh, we're able to visualize that data. Um, we can see the data as it is being collected, uh, as it comes in um, and, uh, and, and we can uh, view different uh, aspects of, of what's going on uh, with the maintenance throughout the city 
and it's been uh, uh, hugely successful. Uh, one of the, uh, as indicated by the award here by ITS Canada, and um, we feel like we've, we've achieved a certain level and there's more things that we're learning as we go along and, and we certainly have more ideas how to improve it and make it better. And uh, I just end by saying, uh, yeah, we certainly like to share our, our learnings with uh, any other uh, cities or, or uh, road authorities on, on uh, how we uh, uh, approach that and, and what the benefits were and, and, uh, and some of our lessons that we've learned through that process. Thank you. <clears throat> I think the next question is uh, to Susan and to Mara on the CAV readiness plan. I would ask in terms of the next uh, steps in terms of looking at it more in, the, in terms of pilots, is there a, a regiment or a schedule of pilots that you're aware of and how does that apply? Or like what are the overall steps going forward beyond the workshops? So I can just start and Susan, um, uh, maybe you can jump in. Um, so as part of the, the primary uh, project, we did come up with a number of different, there's five program areas and there were a lot of pilots that were identified there. Um, so that was definitely part of the project. Um, I'll pass it over to Susan, uh, who can maybe speak on what has been occurring within the Avon, Avon forum after um, the, the project was completed. Um, sure. Yeah, Susan here. Um, so one of the um, the recommendations that came out of the readiness guideline was to set up a community of practice, uh, which we have done through uh, Metrolinx and, and Avon. Um, and we have a, a forum that uh, that is being shared across uh, municipal transportation owners. It's really focused on as a as a road or transit authority to share our experiences. We're just um, we have been uh, up and running over the last year, sharing uh, interests uh, projects of interest, um, and that we're now evolving into a community of practice. Uh, just just planning those communities of practice. We definitely found um, interest in transportation planning, in, interest in infrastructure and pilots, infrastructure in transit. Uh, and we're trying to sort of restructure the forum so that, um, so that we can get a little bit more focused in areas uh, of interest. Um, we, have, <clears throat> we don't have a, a formal pilot program at the moment, um, we have been sharing a lot of lessons learned from active pilots that are underway in each different municipality and trying to uh, really understand what's going on um, and what other people are doing across uh, across Ontario. Um, and at the moment, um, we're still in the midst of sharing all of those uh, pilots and what everybody's doing. Um, and we're just starting to look at um, whether we want to put down a schedule and see if we can um, you know, find uh, pilots of interest from other jurisdictions uh, that we can start to collaborate. Uh, but unfortunately, at the moment, we don't, no one really has a dedicated pool of money for pilots for the sake of pilots. Um, so we're doing uh, a lot more sharing of information, seeing who's already doing their own pilot that they were able to justify for their own purposes, um, and then sharing that information across muni municipalities so that they can uh, watch and learn, uh, participate potentially in the future, um, or do something similar themselves. Um, so yeah, it's it's been as probably not as a productive year with the pandemic uh, that we all would have um, preferred. Uh, lots of uh, distraction and getting new projects up and running. But the Ministry of Transportation has has a pilot um, underway on the 401, uh, doing um, roadside units and sort of connected vehicle applications. Uh, we hope to grow and expand that, and we're willing to share that information with other municipalities um, so that they can do something similar or that we can. Um, um, you know, share our experiences and, and build off each other. So it's all in the works. Um, there's lots and lots of work to do. Um, never enough hours or money. So we really need to uh, stay as a community and learn from each other and uh, piggyback off each other. One additional question for Susan and uh, Mara. You mentioned private entities. So do we have any connection to the Michigan platform and their uh, space that they use? for their connected vehicle program? Um, the Ministry of Transportation doesn't have any formal relationship with them at the moment, uh, but we do have pretty good, um, what's the right word? Um, you know, um, awareness and opportunity to discuss with them. We're actually working with uh, with Avon uh, on, 
um, in areas of mutual interest with Michigan. Um, so we don't have a lot of, we don't have a specific project up and running yet with them, but, um, but we are aware of the work they're doing on the Michigan side and we're looking for opportunities to uh, collaborate and understand. Um, also in, um, in, in the Niagara area, the, um, the NITEC group is, uh, is working on smart mobility on the Buffalo side and same thing, we participate with NITEC and we're looking for um, um, opportunities to, uh, to work more closely with them. So yeah, we are aware. Excellent, thank you. Um, next question goes to the city of Burnaby. Maybe you guys can elaborate a bit more on why this specific area within bus detection and signal system in terms of how you moved it forward and sort of what are the next steps in terms of what you're planning to do? Yeah, uh, thank you, Usha. Uh, so uh, in the, throughout the region, the Metro Vancouver region, like uh, there are uh, transit hotspots, like the congestion points have been identified and uh, the region uh, TransLink looks after the transit bus operations uh, with CNBC in the region and they approached us. And this was one of the, the biggest points where uh, 13 different bus routes arrive at this uh, second busiest uh, SkyTrain station in the region. And they suffered heavily because there was no separate left turn lane. It's, it's a prime uh, area, real estate area, and, and to achieve a left turn lane isn't simple, like it's built up area as well. So we had to find a solution that in, in the mixed stream of traffic, uh, how do we uh, detect buses? And, and so we uh, resorted to this uh, lighter based technology that can tell the length height of a bus and uh, confirm it's a bus, it's not a car and bring up this uh, transit phase uh, to allow the buses to turn left uh, and hold uh, back the opposing through traffic. So we, uh, and it's, it's happy to report eight months, uh, no, not a single complaint report. Um, and and, and uh, the operators, everyone is happy. Uh, although the bus ridership has dropped because of the pandemic, but uh, it will pick up again uh, and, and it will be more meaningful. And in the in the in Burnaby, uh, there are other locations where there are different types of delays uh, to transit buses. We would like to work with TransLink and find ways to uh, find solutions. And it may or may not be the same technology. It's uh, there are different types of issues uh, throughout the region. Uh, uh, the same problem. And uh, TransLink's focus is now more to because road building isn't all the only way, right? So the the so, so this kind of uh, technology and uh, finding ways to optimize that will be the focus of the region uh, and um, like very different, many different municipalities who are the, in charge of uh, the roads. Uh, so TransLink uh, is, identifies the locations and also provides funding partnership. But, uh, but the more uh, the uh, lead to deliver those uh, and then come up with solutions that are feasible and operationally kind of make sense from city's point of view are up to us. Then uh, uh, there are like 27, 29 municipalities here. So, uh, so we are just one of them. And uh, so happy that uh, we were able to come up with the solution in this case. And uh, we will definitely be uh, looking, uh, uh, keeping an eye uh, for, uh, for uh, other things that are happening throughout Canada and uh, the US and elsewhere uh, to find and learn uh, more. And, and find solutions uh, for the other locations that are uh, in the city. Thank you. Thank you. One additional question to Susan as well um, from, uh, from the audience. Uh, congratulations on receiving the award. Would you be open to working with another county on joint opportunities, especially with regards to sharing expertise with the mutual exchange of technology? Uh, yeah, absolutely. We're uh, we're interested in in being um, engaged and working with with uh, pretty much anyone. Um, we're uh, we're always uh, interested in looking for opportunities, and then depending on what that is and uh, we what tools we have available to make that happen, uh, we're always interested in in discussing uh, any opportunity with with just about anybody. <laughs> Thank you, Susan. Um, very last question for the um, people who were champions and young professionals who got the award today. What would you encourage sort of new up and comer um, ITS um, 
industry uh, individuals, what would you say to them in terms of what IPS is for you and how would they perceive IPS in the future, um, future landscape? Maybe I'll, I'll take this one. Um, yeah, so I, I think ITS, I mean, many of us have um, come from different backgrounds um, and uh, ITS is really about that intersection between civil engineering, electrical engineering, transportation engineering. And it's really about, you know, um, figuring out um, the best solutions and accounting for the operations side. So, so I would encourage, um, I guess, newcomers to, to sort of understand and that, that interaction between the different disciplines and that coordination aspect. Um, yeah. And just to add to that, um, it's, I think it's really important to uh, showcase the value of the technical committees within ITS Canada. It's, it's definitely a great way to learn um, about ITS and everything ITS Canada has to offer. So I think that's definitely um, important as well. Thank you, John. And Jeff? Uh, which Jeff? Um, but uh, I guess my, my perspective would be that uh, if you're just asking what ITS is or, or what you should be looking at uh, moving forward, it really is solving problems through the use and application of technology. Thank you. So I wanna congratulate everyone on the ITS awards that uh, um, of 2021. And for all those who've submitted, I have to say thank you and kudos to you for taking the time and putting together uh, an abstract for the submission itself. And I would encourage a lot of others who are participating today to to do so within their own firm, or even if you know of peers in the industry, please reach out and ask them when you see these um, invites for submissions to do so, because it actually showcases and provides a forum for others to really learn from each other. So I would ask that for next year that we all do, do that and put, put, put some effort into, into doing so. And thank you for thank you for everyone who participated today. And over to you, Rachel. Thanks, Usha. Congratulations to all the award winners. On behalf of ITS Canada um, and our sponsor, IBI Group, thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy schedules to be with us today. We have made a donation in your honors to local charities. We hope that you were able to learn more about new and exciting projects and about the incredible individuals who make a difference in their communities. A reminder that the virtual exhibit hall is available to you, so be sure to visit our vendors and share your conference session on ITS Canada's social media channels using the hashtag ITSC2021. And please join me at the opening plenary coming up at 1215 Eastern Time. And I hope to see you again tonight at the Exhibitor Social Hours with doors opening at 645 Eastern. Thank you, everyone. And one last thing before everyone drops off, can we all stay with our videos on? Because they want to take a good full screenshot of all the, uh, all the award recipients, including yourself, Rachel. Okay. <laughs> Sounds like fun. Yeah, everyone can turn the videos on and we can just take uh, let uh, Raf and Yannicka take a quick shot of all of us. Sure, we don't see. Okay. Three, two, one. There's Ian. I was going to say we don't see Ian, but <laughs> we did.